Hi, in this problem we're given this function and asked to find the difference quotient. Here's how we'll proceed. All right, so a bit of a beastly problem, but could have been a lot worse. Not too terribly bad. In this problem, the first way to approach the difference quotient, and this is on a personal level, is to get f of x plus h first. Why? After that, all you got to do is put the original function in the back part of the fraction and h in the bottom. So the first step here, find f of x plus h, means take the original, replace any x's with its own set of parentheses, and jam x plus h inside of your parentheses. So here we had 5 minus, 5 minus, we replaced x with a set of parentheses, and then inside of those we jam in the x plus h. We still have cubed, so the cubed appears here. Cubing means this. 2 cubed, for example, is 8. Why? It's 2 times 2 times 2. So cubing means multiply the thing you've got a total of 3 times times itself. So we've got x plus h cubed, so we'll need x plus h times x plus h times another x plus h. You can handle the multiplication here in any order you'd like. It doesn't matter. Personally, when working this problem, I thought it would be easiest to handle multiplying these two and leave x plus h hanging on the end. So in doing that, we multiplied x times x to get us x squared, x and h, and then h and an x. So technically, we'll end up with a 2 in the middle. There's some other videos you can look at if you didn't catch that here. The last one is h times h, which gives us h squared. And now we've still got this x plus h, which means we need to take each component here and distribute, multiply it, onto each component of the second set of parentheses. So what's going to happen is we're going to get this x multiplying this x, which means x squared times x will give us x cubed. Then we come back and let this x squared touch the h. So we'll have an x squared and then h. After that, we got to come back to the 2xh and let it come over and multiply the x. So the x's will multiply to give us 2x squared h. Then we come back, let it hit this last guy. Of course, h and h will give us the h squared term and the two x's in front. And then the last part here, we let this h squared hit the x, which will give us x h squared. And finally, we get down to the h squared times the h, which gives us h cubed at the end. Kind of long, kind of lengthy, but it got us there. Now we need to combine anything that's similar. So we go and look. x cubed is by itself. But is there something that has an x squared and an h? Well, yeah, the next piece is x squared and h. There's two of them. So this 1x squared h adds together with the 2x squared h's to give us a total of 3x squared h's. So we've simply put those two together. Then we go and hunt again. Oh, look, we have an xh squared and an xh squared. There's two of them here plus one more will give us, in a like manner, a total of 3xh squareds. So these actually combined together, added together. And now we still have x, uh, the x cubed in the front and the h cubed in the back. Finally, we can let the negative get distributed onto every component. Well, all of these were positive, so letting the minus touch each one makes each one negative. It's at this point that we really can start to focus on the difference quotient. Now that we've simplified this, we're just going to use our difference quotient formula and jam it into the top left part of the fraction. So writing the difference quotient just for the sake of confirmation that we know what we're doing. f of x plus h is all the stuff we ended up with right here. So we'll just copy it and paste it into the top left part of our fraction. Then we're going to go and subtract the original. And the cautionary tale always is, just throw a set of brackets or parentheses around the original. So you subtract each part. Otherwise, you're probably going to get it wrong. So here we put the minus and a parenthesis or a bracket you can stick in. And the original function will go inside, which of course was 5 minus x cubed. With polynomials, your hope 
is that the original function's parts go away. And if you search, you're gonna look for a five, and in this line, oh, here's our five. It's positive here, it's positive here. Oh, but there's a negative outside, which will get distributed and make it a negative. So it's because of this minus that can touch this guy, our positive five will cancel with what will become a negative five. So in effect, we can just say, this guy is going to cancel with this guy after the minus sign touches him. In a like manner, x cubed here is negative. So we ought to go back and look for a negative x cubed. Well, there was a negative x cubed right here. Once the negative can jump inside and negate it and take it away, he's gonna end up canceling with the negative x cubed that's out here. So what we're left with is all the stuff that's in the middle, minus 3x squared h, minus the 3xh squared, minus the h cubed, all over h. When we go to cancel these out, it's been mentioned before, h will cancel, it's a common denominator, there is an alternative way of thinking about it. The alternative way of thinking about this is to think about each part over h, because it's the common denominator, so just as confirmation here, we could have written this with each component, each piece over H individually. It's not necessary, it's just optional. And that'll clarify what cancels. H here drops a power of three to a power of two. H here kills the power of two and brings it down to one. H here kills this H off. So we're left with minus three X squared minus 3xh with a single power, minus, at the end, h with the new power of two. So sometimes it's easier to think about it this way. Once you catch on though, you can just start canceling them here and you'll always get this right if you know what you're doing. Hope you found this helpful. Look forward to providing some more solutions for you in the future. Have a great day. Bye-bye.